What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Anique. I'm a classical pianist. It's Sunday. It's time for another video. As you might know, I'm studying all the Chopin tunes right now as program for my final exam, the concert exam, which is like the last step of my official studies. So right now I'm like studying all the Chopin tunes simultaneously and I thought it would be cool to share some thoughts about the music and the technique and everything around it here on my YouTube channel. And today I would like to talk about one of the most famous Chopin tunes, which is Opus 10 number no. 3, also known as Tristesse. I don't think it's a good name for this piece and I will explain why in this video. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of awesome classes about like pretty much everything from music theory, about cooking, photography, video editing, to painting and drawing, like basically really everything. What I love about Skillshare is that you can start on any skill level and that there's no advertisement. Very often when I'm watching tutorials, I get really disturbed by all the advertisement in the middle of the video. So my learning process and the flow of the learning process is like interrupted by the advertisement, which wouldn't be a problem on Skillshare. Right now I am following a music theory class by Jason Allen, which helps me a lot to refresh and repeat things that I learned at the university. And also as it is in English, it helps me to get the right terms because everything I learned was in German. Now there is a special offer of Skillshare. The first thousand subscribers of my channel who click on the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So don't waste any time, go and click on the link in the description box. Okay, let's start with the name. I don't know who exactly gave this name, Tristesse, to this etude. The only thing I know is it was not Chopin himself. In general, I think there is a big problem when people start to give names to a piece which is not given by the composer himself, because you start to get fixed on a specific interpretation of the piece, which is maybe not the will of the composer. The piece, if you want, it already has a name. It is called Etude Opus 10 Number no. 3. So it is actually part of a bigger piece. There is something that happens before, there is something that happens afterwards, and you always have to like see the connection between the pieces and like when exactly it is happening and so on. So as soon as you give a piece a name, you start to like get it out of its environment, let's say. So these are like, let's say, the main problems that I already have when you give a piece a name. And in this specific case, like the Tristesse, I think it went already way too far and people started to like over romanticize this piece, starting to play it extremely slow and slower and slower and slower to a point where you can't like really breathe in a natural way anymore because like you would have to breathe after every two or three notes. <laughs> and also tristesse means that this is like a super sad and depressive and like melancholic piece, while there are other pieces that are way more sad and like way more expressing this, ugh, my life sucks, I just wanna die feeling, you know? <laughs> I mean like, just look at opus 10 number six or opus 25 number seven. Let's talk about why I think it is not as sad as you might think it is. Now, if we look at the tempo, it is written lento, but not only lento, there is something written behind it. <laughs> it says lento ma non troppo, means lento, but not too much. And also, I'm not working only with one edition, I'm studying with, I think, four different editions. And in one of them, they also left inside the scores what was written originally before Chopin changed it into lento. And surprise, it was written vivace ma non troppo. So vivace is really like the opposite of sadness, you know. <laughs> it's lively, it's happy, it's, it's dancing often and there's like nothing sad about it at all. <laughs> Obviously Chopin changed it into lento, so he wanted it to be a little bit slower probably, but still something he kept there, which is the metronome number. Okay, wait, this is not completely correct. It was written first vivace, then he changed it into lento, but there was no metronome speed given while it was still vivace. So actually he didn't write any metronome speeds for the vivace, but then when he changed it into lento, manantropo, he wrote the metronome speed 100 for eighth. So here there's the average tempo, what you can hear in most of the recordings.
Don't get me wrong, I think it's a nice tempo, I think it's beautiful, it sounds great. It sounds very tristesse, however, it is not written in the scores like this. Here is the tempo that is written by Chopin. Now, in my opinion, I think it's a little bit too fast, let's say. Maybe I'm just also too used to all the slow recordings of this piece. And also, nowadays, we know that there are some metronome numbers, especially in the Chopin tweets, where you know that it's it's just way too fast. Maybe there was a problem with his metronome or whatever, I don't know. However, even if we slow it down, like let's say from 100 to 80, it would still be way faster than most of the people are playing it. Now with this new tempo, it changes obviously the whole character of the piece. Like this faster tempo, it makes it more singable, more danceable. Like it's it's way more lively than before. It's not sad anymore. <laughs> One thing that is, in my opinion, very important also is there is a middle part of this piece where most of the people are suddenly changing the tempo extremely. Like they are basically playing double the tempo. But again, this is not written in the scores. If Chopin really wanted to have a completely different tempo, he would write it inside. Here he is writing poco più animato, which means a little bit more animated. It's not like, yeah, we're going on the highway, let's go, presto. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, you know, a little bit faster. And I think just by knowing this about the tempo, there are already so many problems that you can solve just by changing the tempo, so it's not too slow and also not too fast, you're just coming to the middle. Most of the time people are starting way too slow and then when the middle part comes they are starting way too fast. So the change of tempo is so big that they are a little bit overwhelmed and also they just don't get the right tempo and then the con bravura part starts and everybody's like scared of this part and like Ugh, fuck. <laughs> so if we would just read carefully what the composer wrote inside, he could choose a tempo which is a little bit closer to each other. It would still be a little bit faster in the middle part, but you are already preparing yourself from the beginning on to this tempo and also it's not like a super big jump to get this tempo.
This was the video for today. Did you know that this piece was originally vivace and also that the original tempo is much, much faster? Tell me in the comments down below. I hope I could show you in this video why the name Tristesse is not helping at all for this etude. It takes away a lot of interpretational freedom and many people are just relying on it without thinking about it anymore. But this is just my opinion. Tell me in the comments what do you think about it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. We'll see us in the next videos. Bye. Wie viele?